Okay, so what we're doing today is we're beginning a project to make a stained glass piece of artwork using some linear equations. So we're going to just get a brief, uh, see a few uh, examples of some stained glass. We're going to focus mostly on then the work of Frank Lloyd Wright. So here's an example of a cathedral window um, in, from England. Here's a close-up of one from France. And in the process of stained glass, of course, this comes from an Illinois Math and Science Academy unit on material science, there are chemicals that are used to produce the colors in the glass, and we're not going to get that much in detail, um, but that's, I think, why this is going through all these samples. Uh, Frank Lloyd Wright, this is a, a sample of a window from the Dana House. The Dana House is located in Springfield, Illinois, and you can tour it. You can actually walk in and see it. So if you can notice all the different parts of this glass uh, where he's chosen to add color, he's left things clear, um, but everything is pretty linear, a lot of straight lines. Here's a different um, house. This is the Bradley House. It's located in Kankakee, Illinois. This is the Roby House, and it's in Chicago. So we have a brief little uh, video that we're going to watch about the Roby House. This one is from, it's the Lake Geneva Inn in Wisconsin. I think art collaborates with life and a building is the most perfect example of that. You can't actually walk into a painting except in your imagination, but you can walk into a building like the Roby House. I was a teacher who built a lot of my curriculum each year around the interests of kids. I was teaching third grade one year and I had a group of kids who were interested in architecture, so of course I thought about the Roby House, and I actually did not know much about Frank Lloyd Wright's prairie style period at that time, so I learned with my class. When you look at the Roby House, you understand that the Roby House is giving you a language, a visual design language. And kids, to my great interest, understand Frank Lloyd Wright's language very easily, almost in a nonverbal way. They were looking at the ceilings and the rugs and the floor design and the structure of the house itself. I learned from that 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 language is very accessible to children as well as to adults. I think architecture is ideal for teaching children, actually, because it always involves a certain degree of design, art, persuasive thinking, and mathematics. And when I looked carefully at the Roby House, I thought, my gosh, it's all here. The stories are here. The math is here. The art is here. This is it. One of the magical things is that it has no wall that keeps you out. I mean, you feel as though the house is sitting with an amazing degree of comfort in juxtapositions to gorgeous big new buildings. It's sitting with comfort even though it is such a different kind of structure. If you look closely, you see something fascinating. You see a story embodied in architecture or at least embedded within it. So what we're going to be doing today is we are going to start with a piece of graph paper. Um, in these pictures and on this uh, tutorial, it's folded in half. You won't need to do that, okay? You're going to be instructed, and they are step-by-step -step instructions. So kind of pay attention. You'll get a picture view of what you'll be doing, and then you'll actually get your handout. So the student pages are going to direct you to draw a rectangle that is 20 blocks wide and somewhat taller than the width. It'll be your choice as to how um, tall you draw it. This sample is done using uh, the height of 28 blocks, which seemed like the good shape of a window when you compare it to Wright's uh, style of windows. And you may choose a different height, but you might want to make an even number for the height. It might make it easier for the next step. You will then draw a coordinate plane right through the center, label them X and Y. So make a visible dot at the origin. On the student pages, you will be instructed then to pick three pairs from 
the left column over here, okay? And so they kind of chose these three. These are going to make the horizontal lines, and then you will draw those horizontal lines. Okay, these will be your horizontal lines that you'll be drawing, and they will look like this. So this is the lines four, or y is equal to four, and y is equal to negative four. You can see them in kind of the darker blue lines that are drawn. Then you draw in your y equals to 10, negative 10. Again, you get to choose what you want them to be. Okay, so everybody's windows will be a little bit different, not only in the color selections, but in the lines that you choose. Then you're going to be choosing three pairs from the right column. These are going to be your vertical lines, and you will draw them on your coordinate plane. And you can see 2 and negative 2, 6 and negative 6, 7 and negative 7. So again, you get to pick any ones that you want to, and you're going to start to make a pattern. Finally, you can select five or six pairs um, from the bottom half of the page, and these are the linear equations. These are in the slope-intercept form, and then you will be graphing those diagonal lines. Okay, so we know we have some that will be positive slopes, some that will be negative slopes, and you can see the sample one has selected six. So you just start uh, graphing using a ruler the diagonal lines. Okay, notice that the pairs are perpendicular to each other, and you know a lot about the perpendicular lines and their slopes. So that when you get done, you will have um, a bunch of lines. But remember, when we make our uh, window, you don't have to choose every one of these lines to trace onto your window. I don't know if you can recall back from the first part of the PowerPoint, a lot of those windows had a lot of open space. They weren't lines all the way through it. So you get to pick which lines to accent. And so this will kind of show you what they chose to do. So we'll get the tracing paper, so that it might be tomorrow or the next day when you're ready for it. When you are ready for tracing, make sure that we have allowed enough time to do so, and you might want to tape it down so it doesn't move. And then using a black marker, and I'll supply the black marker for you. We'll make a thin black marker um, to outline the window, and then pick and choose the lines you want to use. So begin selecting line segments that you want to include in your window. Um, consider design constraints of the prairie style if you want to from the examples on the, on the slideshow. Um, it says very satisfactory designs can be made using roughly half of the available line segments. You'll trace the line segments which fit the constraints for which you see for your window. So once you remove the tracing paper, you can see the results of the work. So they've just highlighted those parts of the lines. And now this is a part where you get to add color. You get to decide what color you want to add for your window. Um, in this example, the person who made this example, they wanted the middle part of it to look like a tree. So they're going to pick brown then for that middle part to be more like trunk-like. But you get to design and do whatever you want to do. And remember that um, maybe three to four colors is enough. You don't want to overdo it. And you also want to leave some to allow some natural light so there's some just parts that are not colored in okay we'll be making a frame I'll get you some construction paper the easiest way to make the frame is to cut out your original grid so that you have the correct size trace it onto the construction paper and then cut it out and then we'll be putting the stained glass behind it